Have you been having a hard time getting on that dialer and just making those calls and you just can't get yourself to do it you don't know why check out this video i did with brad chandler as we talk about the mindset and what it really takes to push yourself to do things that you don't want to do and maybe it's not your fault check it out today we got something special i'm actually at one of the flips that i'm doing with one of my buyers and we're going to talk about kind of what's going on in the market right now and a little bit about brad chandler because if you guys don't know brad chandler what he does i bring him on here because i love i love his energy i love his spirit so we're going to talk about that but brad tell us a little bit about how the market's doing for you and uh you do northern virginia but you do like dc area too right yeah we do all of dc all of baltimore and los angeles so uh the market has been really good for us it's kind of crazy with interest rates continuing to climb up i thought like people would you know jam the brakes on. My partner and I were talking the other day and he's like, how can someone afford an $800,000 house now? Do you realize how high the mortgage payment and taxes and insurance are on $800,000 house? I mean, like drastically higher than they were a year and a half ago. So yeah. despite that though, somewhere people are coming up with money and mortgages and, and the market's hot. Well, well, Brad, do you think they're like speculating that it will go down? What do you think's uh, what are the, what do you think's going on? No, I I think that people, you know, there's 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 a lot of people that say that we're about you know due for a complete worldwide crash, <laughs> and then there's a lot of other people that are like, no, everything looks good. Like I think next year is going to continue. Prices are going to continue to go up. So these people buying these houses think it's a really good time to you know fix and flip a house. Dang. Okay. And and you said in your business you're not even really involved in the day to day action right now, right? You've set it up so you can. You you know, pursue what we're going to talk about what you do. Yeah, bit. we did 253 deals last year. Um, I think we're on pace to do something similar this year. And I'm in a fortunate position where I only work an hour a week in that business. Oh my gosh, an hour. So can you kind of explain for people that want to build that kind of model? Do you do more wholesales or do you do more fix and flips? We, we're probably at like 60% wholesale and 40% and you know, taking it down in some way, shape or form and renovating it. Oh, okay. And do you have one that you prefer? Well, I mean, wholesaling, dude, it's just, there, there's no risk, right? There, It's easy. It's uh, nothing can really go wrong with wholesaling as long as you're taking care of the seller and, and not, not leaving them uh, on moving day and being like, hey, I can't buy your house. I got to take you down $40,000. Right. Yeah. No, it totally makes sense. So Brad, you obviously built this company and you've been in real estate. How long have you been in real estate for? Uh, 20 years. I've done about 4,000 flips and, and wholesale deals. Ooh. Ooh, that's crazy. Do you ever wish you could have kept like all of them? <laughs> or, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say every single day, but heck yeah. I wish I could have kept, you know, 10% of them. <laughs> gotcha. Well, let's kind of talk about what you do. Cause I am curious for someone in your situation that has a great company and you're doing well. I'm curious, like, do you feel like owning, like having those properties, if you own them, do you feel like that would add an additional weight to like your life, like having to think about all those properties, or do you feel like you could you can manage it right now? Um, no, uh, so I, you know, I did. I had uh, rentals. I had eighty rentals at one time in the company, and then we got rid of them. And then I started buying some on my own, and it was a hassle. And when I think about buying a rental property myself right now, I would probably go to a market like Baltimore where I have experience. But there's always headaches involved in a rental. So where I'm at in my life now, I've got the real estate company running. It's making good money. I spend all of my time helping people end their suffering and find freedom and joy in their life, right? And so that takes all of my time and I love it so much that I'd rather do that than take a call from a tenant or a contractor. So right now, unless a deal fell into my lap that was really, really good, I'm not actively looking to buy and hold. And plus, I think I'm in this camp that real estate prices are coming down over the next two years. Yeah, okay. So so Brad, let me ask you this. So do you feel like people search for that wealth or for those extra properties and to have all those properties because they're trying to obtain like a certain sense of, like worth, like they're trying to feel like they're worth something. I mean, it's, it's not just a real estate. I, I mean, that's why I got into real estate. I think it's a lot of entrepreneurs. I think a lot of entrepreneurs think that if I can build a business and make this much money, I will feel worthy or I'll get to the place of happiness. And the messed up thing is you're never going to get to that place. Like I know people who make millions of dollars a year, hundreds of millions of dollars a year, and they're not happy. I mean, look at the new, look at Amy Winehouse's and the Prince's and the Michael Jackson's of the world. They had more money than they know what to do with, at least Michael Jackson and Prince, and they're dead right now, right? right. So here's the, here's the secret to life is when 
when you do the work and you go back in your childhood and figure out these programming that, that you received and you can turn around these false beliefs that you're not enough. And you may be listening to this being like, well, I, I, I don't feel that I'm not enough, nor did I. So if you want to take a quick quiz to figure out if you're enough, just go to bradchandler.com forward slash quiz. So most of us get into business to prove our worth or get to the state of happiness that will never come. Here's the crazy thing, though. If you do the work now, you can get to that state without the money. And then when you're in that state, Nathan, trying to make an impact rather than trying to make money to prove your worth, the chances that you'll hit the income goals that you've always had are way higher. So it's like you get to have your cake and eat it too. I love it. So Brad, let me ask you this. So since coming, uh, you've been, was it a couple of years now that you've been into the, like tr uh, trying yep. to improve the, you know, the past traumas and overcoming uh, the things that have happened? Um, yep. How long has it been? It's been two and a half years since I, uh, since I came to Utah, your state, and, and forever changed my life. So tell me how that's impacted your business in the last two years. I'm curious of like how that mindset and how that, that uh, dealing with those it's, things now and changed it's changed business. it's changed everything because Nathan in the first 17 years of business I made five business mistakes that cost me nine million dollars when I look at those business mistakes all of them were around tra chasing my worth so when I shifted two and a half years ago from oh my gosh I don't have to prove anything anymore to I can now go make an impact. Everything has changed. Like we have attracted a different type of people. We've got this core group of people now at Express Home Buyers that gets along. They're thriving. Things are really, really good. My net worth, I was just thinking about this this morning in the gym. My net worth isn't where I want it to be because of all the mistakes. But if you look at my net worth growth in the two and a half years since I made the transformation, it is exponentially higher than any two and a half year period that I've, that I've been in business. That is amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Now, Brad, before you got into this, uh, I think when you came to Utah, you said a couple of years ago, what did you think when people talked about like what you're, we're talking about right now? Did you kind of roll your eyes or you like, come on, that's. Oh, no yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I talk a lot about self-love and and if we would have been on this call three years ago and you said, Brad, do you love yourself? I'd have said, yeah, I love myself. Do you have high self-esteem? Absolutely. Brad, do you care about what other people think about you? Hell no, I don't care. They were all lies. And those lies, Nathan, were controlling my life and they weren't only hurting my business, my relationship with my wives, wives as in I had two ex-wives. It was hurting my, my business, my personal life, my relationship with my kids and my wife. All of those things were destroying me. Now, fast forward two and a half years and I I've realized that now I truly don't care what others think because if someone wants to judge me, that's th their problem and not me. And right. I do have self-love. And where did I get it from? All I did was I went back to times in my childhood where I had these stressful times and where I placed meanings on why is this bad stuff happening to me? Because I must be bad. And I, now I know, no, there was nothing wrong with me. That was my parents' issues, not me. And that has unlocked everything and completely changed my life. And it's something that everyone can do. If you're struggling in your marriage or your business or your health, I know the answer. And I know the reason it's not what you think. It's not your spouse's fault. It's not the additives they're putting in food. It's not, you know, you're not drinking because of, you know, it tastes good. It all comes back to the same thing with every single one of us. And it's these hidden beliefs that were programmed in us as a child. Those limiting beliefs, right? And they, everybody has them. I don't think anyone Every, doesn't, right? I've yet to meet someone who didn't have some unmet childhood needs that caused these coping mechanisms that made them feel on some level that they weren't enough. And Brad, you're on a mission to talk about this, right? Like you're on a mission to let people know, hey, it's maybe picking up that phone and cold calling. It's not that you're lazy or you're dumb. It's it's something that might be holding you back, right? Like in the past. Is that what you're saying? You're a great student, man. You remember everything I say. Absolutely. So I know you well, and I love the fact that you are so about client success and your student success. Because right. that's not, not, not a lot of you guys in your space just want to take money and then move to the next person. You're not like that. And so we've talked a lot about this on on previous episodes. When you have one person who's highly successful and the others are, the other other isn't, it might be these limiting beliefs that, you know, they, they go to pick up the phone and another coach might tell them, oh, just look in the mirror and say, I'm great. Well, that right. shit doesn't work when you've got these deeply seated beliefs. So if you can get rid of these beliefs, I'll pick up the phone and talk to anyone. I'll go, you know, not that I'm, I'm, I'm in a great relationship, but if I wasn't in a great relationship, I could now go up to any woman in, in a bar, a, a, a restaurant, a, a gym. And I used to never be able to do that unless I 
I had drinks or I had weed in me because I was afraid of them judging me. Now, again, I've learned that if someone judges you, it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with them. So I'll pick up the phone and call anyone. I'll walk up to knock on a door, a house and be like, hey, would you want to sell your house by chance? If they get mad at me, it's not my fault. It's it's right. how they feel about themselves inside. You know, it's interesting. I um I make we make offers, right? That's what we do. And I make a lot of offers to agents that are that to them they think is like extremely low. So they call me, hey, you're a crook, you're you're trying to steal my client's house. And I'm like, look, we've never met. You don't know what I'm trying to do. And obviously this house needs a lot of work and you just don't know how to run your numbers. But like I, you know, I would never react like that if someone made a low offer to me. I, it's just not in my my mind, it's not like how I react, but I, it makes me almost think like the way people react, like you were saying, has a lot to do with the, <laughs> their past, their limiting beliefs, right? 100 percent So that realtor who goes crazy on your offer, it has nothing to do with your offer. It has to do with how your offer made them feel. So their brain does what it does because when they're upset, they're in fight or flight. So they're looking for that line right on the on the prairie or the savannah. So they go back to a time in their childhood where someone made them feel the same way. Your offer made them feel less than. They brought that back and they gave it to you when really they were giving it to themselves or whoever made them feel that way as a child. Unless your kids are getting attacked by a bear, there's really no reason to get upset or sad or freaking out anger about anything. Yeah, especially a low offer, right? Just, just, yeah, okay. He made a low offer. Okay. I'll just tell him, hey, Nathan, I was actually looking for 300000 You put 150000 in, so we're way off. I wish you... That's how I would do it. Of course, in the right? Past, though, in the past, I might have reacted like that agent being like, dude, who the f do you think you are? Like, right. you're disrespecting me. Well, guess what? No one can disrespect you. The only person who can disrespect you is yourself. If you think someone disrespected you, you're just disrespecting yourself. Very, very powerful stuff. And I think that should help everyone that's out here in the industry because a lot of, I know when I first started in wholesaling, I had those limiting beliefs too. Like maybe I didn't believe in myself. Maybe there's something that happened. But now when I talk to people or someone comes back at me with that energy, not even phased, you know? So I, I've definitely leveled up. And, uh, you know, I think I want to direct everyone to your website. You said you have a love quiz, right? Yeah, self-love quiz. I mean, all change begins with awareness. So if you're listening to this being like, I'm good, go take the quiz and maybe you are good. Bradchandler.com is my website. Bradchandler.com forward slash quiz. It's 12 questions. All you have to do is read them and, and select that answer. It, it doesn't take long at all. Yeah, it's a good thing. And I, I've taken it and I think it's amazing that you're, you're doing this, Brad. And the reason I bring you on here on the Batch Weekly Call with me is because I like your message. And I think it's important because a lot of people, they do focus just solely on the money when really what we're doing is we're trying to improve lives. Like we're trying to improve the communities, trying to improve the seller's life, the people that buy it by, you know, updating properties. Like if you have that mindset, you're doing something bigger and you're waking up with purpose. But if you're just doing it to make money and you just see dollar signs, it's not a fulfilling life. Yeah, because look, you're in the good hands with my boy, Nathan right here and he can teach you how to make millions of dollars but if you're not happy and, and you've got these these underlying beliefs buried in your subconscious that are messing up your marriage and your kids behavior and, and your health what, what good is it what good is a million dollars a year if you're miserable no, no it doesn't matter no good but you can guess what you can have both of it you can have Nathan Nathan to teach you to financial freedom and independence but you can also do the work and have like I said earlier have your cake and eat it too so if you're struggling or suffering in any way shape or form you don't deserve that that in life. You were put here for a massive mission. You deserve to live a joyous life with deeply connected relationships, intimate relationships, personal relationships. So if you're struggling with that, I'd love to help you. You can schedule a call with me. And if I can't help you, I'll point you in the direction of someone who can. Brad Chandler, you got fans over here on Facebook. Facebook user says, Brad Chandler is the man. <laughs> Connecting, networking, loving others, other God's children. It's so important. So don't don't overlook this. Not, this isn't a competition. Brad, you do deals. I do deals. We can do deals together. There's enough Hell to yeah. go around, right? Heck yeah. And by the way, if you like this video, smash that like button so more people can see it. And we'll get you more content like this where we show you exactly how to do it step by step.